our pewter collection is very special. Pewter is a metal alloy, and basically it's a mixture of tin, copper, and lead. And in these pieces here, we're guessing the lead content is probably a little bit higher than what traditional uh, contemporary pewter pieces would be. Lead being not a very safe thing to ingest, these pieces have some sort of a buffer, like for the teapots, but they were high in lead content, which is what was used during the uh, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th century in Chinese pewter makers. Our Chinese pewter pieces were probably made during the 19th or 20th century. And while quite a few of them do have artist marks on the bottom and in the inside, they're signatures we have not been able to identify yet in our collection. So we are not quite sure exactly who these individual artists are for our pieces, but we do have some chop marks that maybe with uh, more research we could find out a little more about the individual artists or the studios or the um, villages these might have been made in. Our collection is about 145 pieces of pewter, plus or minus everything from large vessels to small containers to wine vessels, teapots, and chafing or food containers. These pieces came to us from Dorothy Huggins, who is the third of the Huggins sisters here in Topeka. Her older sisters, Alice and Mabel, both were missionaries over in China from about 1917 to the beginning of the Communist Revolution in 1949. And I think Alice was finally kicked out of China uh, by the Communists in 1952. These pieces are what Mabel and Alice collected sent back to Topeka to their sister Dorothy, who then would sell pieces to local collectors and local buyers. The money then would go back to uh, Alice and Mabel and would go to helping fund the, the schools that they ran in just outside of Peking. So the first piece I'd like to talk about is this wonderful carp chafing dish we have. The computer being mainly made of tin, it's a soft metal so you get this wonderful ability to make these beautiful designs. But we see on the head of the carp here, the double sign for happiness. This would probably be a piece that would have been given at a wedding or used at some sort of a wedding ceremony. And you can see inside the lid here, once you take this beautiful fish off, you actually got a, a maker's mark here. On the inside of the dish, you have this wonderful space. Some sort of a meal would have gone in here. But what's great is you lift this piece out. So you would have filled this with hot water and very much like a contemporary chafing dish with the lit flames underneath, this would keep a vessel warm during a meal. Well, the next thing I'd like to show you are some of these beautiful jewelry boxes we have from the Huggins sisters. Uh, this one is wonderful because it has this great drawer on the front that can be pulled out. But what I think is wonderful is when you open this piece up, you have space for your cosmetics, and then the mirror slides down and you can actually make sure you're putting on your cosmetics correctly. We also have things like teapots, which are my favorite, of course. They are actually lined with Yijing clay, which is the kind of clay that is prized for its ability to brew a beautiful, uh, wonderful cup of tea. Here, once again, is a pewter teapot, and you'll see it has a beautiful floral design on the front, and as we rotate it around, you have script on the back, and that's very traditional and very common in a lot of these vessels, to have a design on one side and some sort of inscription on the other. We also have a beautiful coconut shell handle here, little jade knob. Once again, when we take this piece off, we see the chop mark of the potter is what my belief is. But as we flip the piece over, you'll notice the person who designed the pewter piece has not left any sort of signature or mark. So I'm not sure, since my knowledge of Asian art is not very high, if this chop mark is supposed to be both for the potter and the pewter artist, or if it is a, a, just the potter. Something for us to continue the debate another day. This is a small little vessel that is either a tea pot or it's a wine pot because wine was taken in very small quantities. We have this wonderful bamboo design on the outside, but unlike the other pot where you take the lid off, this, the little itty bitty teapot opens up. Once again, probably put warm water in there to keep the tea warm. So this is a fun little container right here. It's a gourd shape and the gourd is a good luck sign. There's a floral design, some sort of inscription. When you rotate it, you get an inscription on the back and the floral on the bottom so they reverse each other. You might have put medicine or wine or other liquids in it. If you look very carefully at the front, 
you will see a very small, tiny little hole. And that little hole attaches to a pewter straw that goes all the way down the board. And so you can have a little wine as you're walking through the market. You have figures and floral designs. On this one, you will see uh, the whole body of the, of the vessel is actually a coconut shell. Our pewter collection is very special because what it shows us of the past. Each vessel that we have here is some sort of a food vessel or a storage container. And while it could just be simple and utilitarian and very basic in shape, uh, the craftsmen in China have taken the time to create images of natural objects, animals, fruits, vegetables, trees, flowers. And the more you start reading about Chinese culture, you start to see that these are proverbs for more than just, hey, have a great meal, but have good luck in your marriage, or good luck in your new job, or we wish you well in the next life. There's this wonderful attention to detail beyond just the craftsmanship that allows us to see a visual culture. So everything has kind of this, this um, return to nature to some extent, with this being in a public library, this collection. It's a wonderful chance for someone who maybe is studying the Chinese culture, who is studying uh, pre-communist revolution China, and wants to look at some of the proverbs or the sayings that might have been wiped out during the 1950s. This is a great way to find that. It also is a great look at everyday objects. These are not the things you would have found in temples. These are not the things that you would have found um, only in a rich person's home. These are objects that are everyday. And it's just a wonderful look at the past. And while I've given you everything I know about these pieces, if there's someone out there watching this video that knows more about Chinese pewter or some of these pieces spark their interest, please don't hesitate to give us a call or email us. We always love to hear what anyone else has to say or thinks about objects in our collection.